One of your roles as a curator of content is keeping your information up to date. You know, many agencies are still using paper-based processes for collecting asset information in the field. These workflows can be time consuming, they can be slow, and they can actually result in your information being out of date, which is not good because you've got folks back in the office using that information to make decisions on. So we want to look at a way to collect current information and keep that information up to date in real time. So we'd like to introduce you to one of the applications that comes with your ArcGIS Online subscription, the collector for ArcGIS. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick overview of the process, and then we're going to dig in a bit more and see how it actually works. So here's how you find this page. You start at uh, Esri.com website. You can go to the products page. And then we're going to go to ArcGIS Online here on the left. Lots of tabs here to all kinds of information. We want to look at the apps tab right now. So here you're going to see the apps that are available with ArcGIS Online. We've got the operations dashboard, which we just saw a little bit about, the uh, collector for ArcGIS, maps for Office, and Esri maps for SharePoint. So these are some really useful tools that come as part of your subscription. So let's go ahead and dig in here to the collector for ArcGIS. So this is an application that runs on iOS or Android devices, both tablets and smartphones. So we'll go ahead and look at this get started link. What we want to do is look at some of this information here, kind of give you a quick overview of the process. So first off, you're going to create a collector map. So this is your web map within ArcGIS Online. Configure the collection form. That's your pop-up that you can configure. And then publish and share that map. Now my tip for you here is to actually share that map with a specific group or a couple of groups. So as you have field crews going out, you can create groups for those folks so they can easily find the maps that they need to use when they're out in the field. So then we're going to sign into the app and we'll find that map and be able to edit that. So let's see what we actually do out in the field when we're collecting data. So we're going to open up that map going to create the new features, provide the details in the form, the attributes. You can take a photo if you'd like, and then you save and share that. And the minute you save that, that point, it's actually going to be saved back to the, the feature service, which can be accessed by other folks back in the organization. All right, so that's the overview. And do note that there are links here for show me more and, and watch videos, so you can go back to the office and learn some more about this process. All right, so we're going to jump into the App Store and actually look at how you download this application. Now, you do need to download the application for each device that you're going to use it on, both Android or uh, iOS devices. So normally, you'd have a download application button here, but I've already got it downloaded, so that's not showing. But what you can do here is see the details and some ratings and things. I'm going to go ahead and hit Open, open up the application, and take a look at what this looks like. So if you haven't yet activated your ArcGIS Online subscription, you can actually still go ahead and use Collector by using this Try Collector button here at the bottom. Yeah, and I want to point out something about this Try Collector button. You do not have to have your ArcGIS Online account set up to be able to try this. And I really recommend that after the seminar, you go and do this. It's going to help you understand what Collector is, and it's going to give you a better understanding of that look and feel for Collector. So I highly suggest you do that right Just after. Just familiar with the workflows. Mm -hmm. So I do have access to an ArcGIS Online subscription, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the tab in the upper left and sign into my account. Quick, everybody look at me while I signs in as a password. <laughs> so this is going to link up to my ArcGIS Online subscription account and bring back any maps that have editable feature services in them. So we can see here that I have access to four maps. Now, depending upon your subscription and how, how many people are using it, how many folks you have going out in the field and doing editing, you might have four maps here, or you could have 44. So it could get kind of confusing here trying to find your maps. This is why I recommended that you share that map to a group. I can go back to that tab in the upper left, and I have access to my groups. So I can go right to my group, and there's my one map I need for my, my work today. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that application right here in Collector. What I'm doing today is I'm going out in the field with uh, the Public Works folks that are uh, installing new bus shelters. So we want to collect that information as they're being installed. So I'm going to hit the GPS button to locate ourselves. And we can zoom in on this imagery to get a better picture. The next button is the Collect New. We want to actually collect the information about that asset. As I said, we're collecting bus shelters today. We'll give it a facility identifier. 
Now, if you do have a newer device, you can actually use the voice recognition feature and talk and fill out these forms. It's pretty nice. The condition is up to date. Install date is today. The condition is excellent because it's brand new. This asset is owned by the city. And the city is going to also do the maintenance and management of this asset. So there we go. I've collected the attributes I need for that feature. Next thing I want to do is collect a photo of it. So we have a history of what it looked like when it was first installed, so we can keep track of it. So there is a camera button right here. So you can actually use your built-in camera. Just hit Add. You can take a photo. I think Harry's a great asset. So. Notice there is a retake button here. So if you have a fuzzy photo or someone walks in front of you, as you take that, you can actually retake the photo. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And notice there's still an Add button here. You can take more than one photo. Lots of times, folks like to get a photo of the back and the front side of an asset. You can also take v videos. So if you have like a, a longer asset, some kind of a pipe or a road feature, you can actually take a video of that as well. So we'll go ahead and say done here. So uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is sometimes the GPS location isn't going to be exactly where you want it. This could be because maybe you're under a bridge <clears throat> or under a heavy tree canopy. Or possibly you're in a car because it's, <coughs> excuse me, possibly you're sitting in the car because it's pouring rain outside and you're filling out the attributes but you're not right next to the asset. Or there's a big dog behind a fence and you don't want to see it. Could be a big mean dog. So there are going to be times when you want to move that point. And you can do that. There's a little map icon right here. This allows you to move the map around, find the correct location, click on the map and move that point. So now we've got that asset located where we wanted. We've got the uh, attribute information and we've collected any needed photos. So before I hit done here to submit this, I'm going to ask Kerry to switch over to his mm -hmm. machine. Yes. OK, so there we go. So Tim, you put the bus shelter in approximately this location. Correct. So go ahead and hit the submit button, and we'll see what happens. It's posting it up. Updates are sent. There it is. So there we go. Our bus shelter now appeared directly inside of my operations, da operations dashboard. We can see all the information that Tim had entered, including that a photo that he had taken as well. It's right in there. OK, so let's take a moment and, and review exactly what just happened. So Tim has downloaded and installed the collector on his mobile device. He's done that on every device that goes out into the field and collects information. What I've done is I've downloaded and installed the operations dashboard on my laptop. This is an application that's freely available for you guys to download and install on every machine that you want an operations dashboard to be ran on. And it's on my Windows machine as well. What the operations dashboard does is it takes, again, a simple web map like you've seen over the past couple years but wraps it in this dashboard that allows me to gain more insight into the features. So here's my web map with that one layer of assets. And you can see this widget down below that's telling me more details about those assets, such as 136 of them are in good condition, 83 of them are in excellent condition, and so forth. So what I want to do is to show you how we can begin to configure a dashboard like this by adding more widgets. So the first widget I would like to add is a summary widget that will summarize the total number of features. So under the tools, edit operational view, I have this widget dialog that now appears. So I'll add a widget that is a summary widget. And in here, I'll call it total assets. And I want to sum up all of the features in my feature service. And I'll change this to be blue and some trailing text for assets. And hit OK. So there we go. We now have a new widget that shows me that we have collected 292 total assets. And I can place that anywhere I want and adjust the size as well. So I want to now look at each individual feature on here. So I want to make a list widget. So I'll go through the same process of adding one. And this will be my list widget. And I'll just call this recent, recently added. And what I want to do is sort this by the install date. I want to sort all these 
by the sending order, so I can see the newest one on top, and I'll only show 20 for right now. Notice here in this preview pane, right now what I'm showing is the icon and the facility ID number. Well, I want to add some more information to that, so I'm going to add another field, and that field is going to be the install date. So here you can now see what the pre through the preview pane what that widget is going to look like. The last thing I want to do is configure the feature actions. And all this means is what, ha what happens when I click on something. So I want to be able to show a pop-up. I want to be able to pan to the item selected and also zoom to. So here's a little tip for everybody. When you go and begin to configure these dashboards and these widgets, here's this double click. This just says what happens when you double click on something. Well, I want it to show the pop-up. Now I'll hit OK, and here is my new widget. I'll place this over here, shorten this up a little bit, and there we go. We now can see more detail about each one of our features. If I double click on one of these, notice it moves my map to the location, it automatically pops up the pop up. Or I can right click, and here I can see the show pop up, the pan to, or the zoom to. So now I can just go and pan to that particular location. And if I want, I can click on them and see that pop up. So the last widget that I want to create is actually a filter so that I can filter out these features. So here, I'll go ahead and add a layer filter. And I'll say added since September 1st. 2013, and I'm going to filter this information by the install date that is greater than or equal to September 1st. Add that filter, and now hit OK. So what we're looking at here is all my 292 assets, the, those assets being listed based upon the newest added and their condition. When I apply this filter of assets added since September 1st, you'll see that I now have only 149 that have been added since that point in time, and all my other widgets have updated. So in this example, we're using the collector to find information out in the field and collect that information. But at the same time, that information is being updated on the dashboard that's here on my laptop. And that gives us a great view, a real-time view, into the field crew's collection of the data. All right, thanks, Eric. So collecting and managing up-to-date content is an important skill for you to sharpen. But you also have to provide useful ways to view that information. By using these COTS applications, you no longer have to build custom collectors and custom viewers for that information. 